Good morning, everyone. This was Ave Maria, interpreted by Sahaja Yogi from uh, Japan. I hope you felt the vibrations. Let's take the bandhan together. Attention on the left channel, Mother Kundalini, please enlighten. My Ida Nadi. Attention on the right channel, Mother Kundalini, please enlighten. My Pingala Nadi. 
the tension on the central channel while we are raising Kundalini. Mother Kundalini, please enlighten my Sushumna Nadi. Namaste. Attention Muladhara Chakra. May Shri Ganesha power be awakened within us. Attention Svadhisthana. May Shri Brahma Deva Sarasvati be fully awakened within us. Attention the Nabi and the Void. May Shri Lakshmi Vishnu principle and the Guru principle within us be fully awakened and manifest through us. Attention the Heart Chakra where we take the protective rainbow. May Shri Shiva Parvati, Shri Durga Mata, Shri Sita Rama, Divine Principles, be awakened in all three Anahat Chakra aspects. Attention Vishuddhi. May Shri Radha Krishna be fully awakened within us. Attention on Sahasrara while we pray for Agya chakra qualities. May forgiveness, complete forgiveness and complete thoughtlessness manifest within our being. We take the seventh protective arch, attention Sahasrara and Namaste. Thank you, Mother Kundalini, for all your protection and for your continuous flow and sustenance that you provide every day. And we can say the Sahar salute, Jai Shri Mataji. Namaste. This day seems to be very auspicious and um, the vibrations were really powerful since early morning. So we have a very special talk of Shri Mataji is not long um, about Shakti and we learn so, so much. Can't wait to share it with you. Um, but before we can have a short, simple, pass it on meditation. If anyone feels to be in, uh, you can write on the chat. We can start by placing the right hand towards Mother Earth. Attention, Mother Earth. Attention, our root chakra, Muladhara chakra. And we can ask Divine Power of Love, please connect me. to Mother Earth, to her powers, to her qualities. Divine power of love. Please truly connect me to Mother Earth. Help me be in tune to all her intentions. We can sing the mantra for Sri Adi Bhumi Devi, the primordial goddess of Mother Earth. Sri Adi Bhumi Devi.
साक्षात श्री आदि भूमि देवी साक्षात श्री आदि शक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देवी नमो नमः नमस्ते मदर अर्थ Let's make sure that we are in nirvichara samadhi, in thoughtless awareness. Both hands relaxed. Let's allow the silence to penetrate us, our body, entire being, to soak into this complete silence. Let's take the right hand, we place it on the left Nabi Chakra, on the left side of the abdomen. Along the line of the belly button on the left hand side. There is also the spleen, which plays a fundamental role, subtle role within us. So let's gently press the fingers of the right palm, just with determination. Left hand remains open. And here we'll ask Mother Kundalini, by your blessings, I am completely satisfied within myself with whatever I have wherever I am I am completely satisfied within my spirit within my being can take a deep breath in, hold it and slowly let it out. Very relaxed. Mind completely relaxed. Mother Kundalini, I found my home, my true home in my spirit. I found the source of complete satisfaction, complete contentment in my spirit. Everything else is an illusion.
Mother Kundalini, please awaken in me the divine power of being nurturing, protecting, make me a giver, a nourisher, for those around me, for those in my family, for everyone that I welcome in my life. Make me as Mother Earth. Mother Kundalini, please, make me as Mother Earth. Let's take a deep breath in, hold it inside, elongate the spine. And let's feel that complete, complete. foundation that lies within us, the strong foundation. of being one with God and God's creation, never separated, never alone, completely satisfied. So satisfied that we can share this satisfaction with others. We become generous, generous with spirituality, joyous and generous from within, generous without any expectation of others. Mother Kundalini, whatever I share was given to me to be shared. Mother Kundalini, please make me as generous as Mother Earth is. We can check with the right hand what we feel emanating from the left Nabi. And we can also invoke the divine principle that governs this chakra. Shri Gruha Lakshmi. Om Dvameva Sakshat Shri Gruha Lakshmi Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devye Namo Namaha Jai Shimataji. Let's relax both hands and in silence We pay attention to what we feel in our palms, in our body. Which chakra is really open? Which one signals some blockages?
there are several blocked along the left channel. So we can place again the right hand towards Mother Earth. If you have access to the candle treatment, of course, and if you yourself feel the left channel blocked, we can use the candle. Let's sing the mantra for Shri Maha Kali, the divine power that governs the left channel. Shri Maha Kali. Om Tvameva Sakshat Shri Maha Kali Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devye Namo Namaha Divine Power Shri Maha Kali Please purify my entire left channel and destroy any negativity, any blockages you find on your way through Ida Nadi. Any impure desires, any negative emotions, Anything that prevents my spirit to shine in complete freedom, please remove. That's not who I am. I am the pure spirit. With the right hand towards Mother Earth, in silence, in complete surrender, Let's observe what happens if we can feel the release to the right hand, the release of any kind of energy to the right hand. Because with the right arm pointing towards Mother Earth, we are really releasing what's not meant to be within our being. And we can also have the attention on the entire flow. Through the left hand we receive supportive energy. The entire left side we might feel it activated. And to the right hand we let go. So it's like in through the left hand out to the right hand. That's for a few seconds. Just watch in the sense, paying attention if anything changes, just like a little experiment with our subtle being at work. can clear our hands, kind of massaging them. We just want to release any kind of negativity. It seems that some of us have the left channel quite blocked, so requires more attention. We can do more work on ourselves today, this weekend. But as we have a wonderful, wonderful and powerful talk to share with you, and already vibrations are actually strong. We'll continue. 
with our meditation. And I'll invite Paula, pass it on to Paula to continue and finalize the meditation. And afterwards we will watch the talk. We can put our right hand on the left side of our chest, on our heart, and with full confidence, we can say, Mother Kundalini, come into my heart. I am the spirit. Ignite that spark in my heart. Father Kundalini, come into my heart. I am the spirit. We can wipe our hands, pulling our fingers and offering to Mother Earth, both sides. Taking deep breaths whenever we need. Let's keep the left hand open. The right hand wraps around the left side of the neck, around the back of the neck and the side. We turn our head completely to the right if we can. We can give ourselves a massage here to take away any tension accumulated in the left Vishuddhi chakra. And here we can say, Mother Kundalini, I am not guilty for anything from my past. I let go. I face myself. And when I know better, I do better. The divine is the ocean of forgiveness, so we don't need to Hang on to any guilt or regrets. Father Kundalini, I let go of any negativity, any impurities in my left Vishuddhi that interfere with my self-respect. And we can shake it off. And now we can nourish the center. Right hand on the left Vishuddhi. And if we're doing candle treatment, we can continue that as well if we like. But right now, attention on left Vishuddhi. And here we say, Mother Kundalini, I respect myself. I will be kind to myself. I will not put myself down because I am respectable. I am the spirit. This divine power is reflected in us. The divine aspect is Sri Vishnu Maya, who is the dignity, gives us dignity within us. Make us a dignified person. Purify my relationships. Please nourish my left Vishuddhi and make my relationships pure and respectable. 
and we let go. We wipe our hands, pulling the fingers. Let's see what we feel now. Hands open, deep breaths in and out slowly. Let's raise our Kundalini with the right hand, inviting Mother Kundalini from the where we're sitting, the base, through the center, all the way up towards the middle of our head, up and beyond the head to the limitless realm of the divine. Mother Kundalini, please rise up and nourish each and every chakra on your way up to Sahasrara, the crown, the enlightened brain. Mother Kundalini, please rise up. We invite the many strands of Kundalini upwards towards Sahasrara and beyond. And now let's press the top of the head with the right palm on the top of the head on Sahasrara Chakra. And we press and rotate left, forward, right, back. Right hand is face down on the fontanella bone. Mother Kundalini, please establish my self-realization, my connection to the all-pervading power of the universe, the divine. is infinite, it's humbling. We can bow our heads slightly and continue to rotate left, forward, right, back. Mother Kundalini, please come into our Sahasrara. Help us to feel that pure love pouring in the nectar from the divine. We raise our palm, palms distance or higher, with no thoughts. We are the spirit. We keep our hands open now on our lap, with no thoughts. And if there's any tension, in the body, our hand can simply go there as Kundalini is flowing through us. It's nourishing each and every center. And our attention is on our spirit and our connection to the all-pervading power of the universe, that infinite realm we all have access to. See you in Sahasrara. I welcome all of you from abroad and this Kolapur is regarded as one of the 
deity's temple, which are three and a half deities, or we can say three and a half coils of the Kundalini. So it is said that in this triangular bone of Maharashtra, because it is surrounded by on all three sides by mountains and the plateau is in the center. So the, all the three sides make a nice triangle. Is the Kundalini of the whole universe, of the whole world, is expressed by Mother Earth in Maharashtra. These are three and a half energies which are coiled together. The first one is of Mahakali. This Mahakali power is expressed in Tuljapur as Bhavani and Shivaji Maharaj used to come on a horse all the way for miles together to get the darshan of this Bhavani at Tuljapur. He knew this. And he had a sword which was called as Bhavani Talwar. And people said that the goddess herself has given this uh, sword to him. Now the second one is Mahasaraswati, is at Mahurgad. We always sing Mahurgad, our song, that is the one. Is Mahasaraswati, which is also called as Renuka Devi. That's the right sided Mahasaraswati. Then the third one is Mahalakshmi that is at Kolhapur. Here, a very bad demon called Kolasu was killed by the mother. So, this place is specially very holy for all of us because you got your realization as the Kundalini went through your Sushumna Nadi which is being nourished by Mahalakshmi principle. So in the temple they sit down, it's a Mahalakshmi's temple, but they sing that, Oh Ambe, please rise, please rise, please rise. This comes with the full understanding of the Sushumna Nadi. But 99.9% .9 people don't know because all the knowledge about Shakti is being lost due to the different timings and people never worried about it. <coughs> so, one has to realize that in Indian Shastras, scriptures. Shakti is the most important thing. It is to be understood. Why? Because, say now, if you have a light or if you have fire, what is the power of fire? The power of fire can be that it can give you light, it can burn away things. But supposing it does not have its power, then who will care for fire? Nothing. So anybody who hasn't got the power of being the spirit, it is useless. So this power, this Shakti, has to be awakened within us because we do not have the power of the Spirit. 
We have to have the power of the Spirit. That's only possible if you get your Self-realization. That is the reason it is very important that we should pay attention to our power. Now this power is made as the power of a mother. Mother is the most loving relationship. And through that relationship, all the love is expressed. That is why the Shakti is that of a mother. And the affection, the love, the patience that mother has for her children, the Shakti too has the same powers. And that is how the Shakti never can harm you. Out of all these Shaktis, all these powers, the highest of all is what we call as the Kundalini, because without her you cannot get realization. But also we can say, higher than that or complementary to that is Mahalakshmi power. Without the Mahalakshmi, you cannot rise. This is the ladder through which this power of Kundalini can rise. So both the powers are very important and very much related to each other. Mahalakshmi principle starts when we have finished with Lakshmi principle. Like in the West, people are fed up with affluence, fed up with all the riches and all that. So they are thinking, what have we achieved? We have gone into imbalances. So what should we do? We have to balance ourselves. So how do we balance ourselves? We have to have the knowledge of the Spirit. That is called as Adhyatma. You have to know what is the knowledge of the Spirit. And to know the knowledge of the Spirit, Kundalini has to be awakened and that you are to be connected to this all-pervading power. Once that happens, you just become one with that energy and you get transformation within yourself. Because there is light and in the light you can see all your problems, all your defects, and also if you know how to correct it, it's the easiest thing to do, is to get transformation in such yoga. All of you have been very much transformed. And now I find it difficult even to recognize you because all your faces are changed, your attitudes are changed, you look so different, so beautiful. Today it seems to be a special day for me, here in Mahalakshmi temple that uh, Mahalakshmi is being awakened and I am feeling really in that state of thoughtless awareness. I don't know how I am talking. And I am just in the meditative mood, absolutely into meditative mood. Because when you are in the center you don't think, you are in meditation. That is why Mahalakshmi is very important. So when you are fed up, you can feel there is something missing and then you take to Mahalakshmi principle. But in India, because of so many saints, we feel that we should short-circuit it. First let us uh, develop our own uh, adhyatma. Let us develop our knowledge of Atma and then take to science. So there is no more imbalance within us. Because without the foundation of Adhyatma, knowledge of the Spirit, you take to any kind of progress, you can topple down. That's why all the Western entrepreneurs, enterprises, and also projections of religion have gone to waste. Because there has been no balance. It is important that we must have the balance within ourselves. Now in India we have people who have this idea, at least that you have to rise higher than materialism and that you have to become one 
the Virat, part and parcel of the whole. This they know. And that's what, by knowing that, once they get to Sahaja Yoga, they grow very deeply, the depth. The depth they have achieved with this faith that we have to be self-realized and that we have to feel the all-pervading power. This conviction itself gives them the depth. And so when they achieve realization, they just go down very deep. But most surprising people who have never heard about Ganesha, who have never heard about Kolhapur, who have never heard about Mahalakshmi, are sometimes much, much better, much more deeper than the people who know all these things by heart. So one can deduct that those who know outwardly, those who know through their books or through some gurus who teach them something, are absolutely outside. They have nothing in them to tell us because, because they have had no experience of the Self, no experience of the Self. That's only possible when your Kundalini rises and breaks your Brahmarandra. That is the time the first experience comes to you of this all-pervading power. So all those people who have been only just praying to Mahalakshmi, have been going to her, doing a lot of penances, fasting, this, that, have no idea as to what Mahalakshmi wants. And they always complain to me, Mother, we've done this, we have done that. People are very religious. They are doing all kinds of ritualism, what we call as karma kant. But with that, you do not reach where you have to reach. So one has to understand that whatever has been written and told about all these great things in India, people may know in words, but in experience they do not know. So Sahaja Yoga is very important to give them this experience so that they can really verify whatever is said in the science of spirituality about getting realization is absolutely true. Not only that, but it's very practical and every person who gets realization can understand it very well. So we are here in a very holy place full of unholy people. But still, there are some very, very good people here also. And because of Mahalakshmi, they make very good ornaments uh, because these ornaments are offered to the Goddess. You can feel there a kind of a subdued feeling for God, feeling for spirituality. But they do not have the experience that you have got. So you are much higher than all of them. And those who have the experience can feel more once they go to the temple, if you can go to the temple to see the place also. But give yourself a big bandhan because I have seen next to the deity, there are very funny people sitting. They're doing all kinds of commercial activities. They're selling flowers, they're selling bees, selling everything. So you have to be careful with the bandhan, you can go and see for yourself. Now they say that this temple is made uh, because it's a swambhu, it's the one that has come out of Mother Earth. You can see yourself if there are vibrations. And moreover, you must know that this uh, puja of these deities are done by people who are not at all in any way religious, but are just commercial people. Commercialism can never give you any satisfaction, can never give you 
at all any satisfaction. Apart from that, it can take you to something unknown of dangerous shores. But if your faith is pure, without any greed, without any demands, then you develop your depth within yourself, which is very helpful after surgery. It's a remarkable thing how Sri Chakra is here and how they have made the complete calculation of Sri Chakra. I met a, a scientist in uh, Russia, in Moscow, who has done a research, very much big research, on, on the Sri Chakra. Now, so we have Sri Chakra on the right side. On the left-hand side, we have Lalita Chakra. So all the things that we do with hands after realization are worked through on the right hand side Sri Chakra, on the left hand side Lalita Chakra. Now how it works is a very complicated thing. But we don't have to worry about that. As soon as you put your hand on somebody, the chakra knows how to work it out. It works by itself, as if it is a built-in mechanism within us which knows what sort of vibrations to be given to a particular person for a particular cause or a particular purpose. If that person has certain defects also, these chakras know what, what is to be emitted, how to work it out. So it is not that we have uh, the Kundalini awakening, only these chakras are awakened. We also have these two chakras awakened within us because of Kundalini. But if you have a Shuddhi problem, then you can find that your hands are stiff and you cannot uh, feel the uh, guidance or we can say the divine uh, intentions. Uh, of realization, because when you start using your hands, you don't feel any vibrations. So how will you know what's happening? It's a very complicated thing, and for that complicated thing, uh, they are, these instruments are made already, are prepared already, they are quite equipped with all the knowledge that is necessary, like a feed, feedback as we call it, or we can call it a complete programming is there. So as soon as you put your hand on a person, the programming starts working it out. Because it is, programming is done uh, by God Almighty, it can never be wrong. There cannot be two different things as far as such yoga is concerned. I have been thinking about writing about all these big, big pitas that are in India. So it will be helpful to you as well as to others in India. But here the atmosphere is so bad, as if to think of God, to talk of God is absolutely wrong. You cannot say. If people are in illusion and they think that all these talks has brought us nothing. To them it is the progress of the West is more uh, effective, more uh, apparent, that they can see how you have progressed in materialism. And they can't understand how we could progress with uh, adhyatma very much in the area of physical development or mental development. So now we come to a point where we realize 
that it is very important for all the Western people to have the foundation of Adhyat. For that it is important to give up some of your conditionings because this knowledge is coming definitely from India. I mean, the Indians had all the knowledge of your medical science, this science, that science, that science. But God's science is in India. And for that, what are you going to do? When the question of God's science is concerned, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to work it out? That this is the science of God. And the God's science has to be understood uh, with full dedication and devotion. Because of the conditioning of the Western uh, influence, the Western progress, sometimes we just do not know how to grasp this knowledge within ourselves. Very difficult. But if you can understand, that as for science, we had to accept it fully from the West. You have to accept the knowledge of your spirit from the East. East has the knowledge of the spirit. For that, you have to be ready to receive it. But if you are still in your arrogance, if you are still in your own conditionings, then you cannot do it. Like a boy who comes from a village, who has never known, <coughs> known about science, and he suddenly put him in a science college. He said, what is this nonsense? What's all this all? I have never known these things. Why should I use a test tube? Why should I go in the laboratory? All kinds of things he can start saying. And this conditioning is there. Then he'll run away from school within one year, or two years, maybe earlier. And that is what I find is their conditioning. <coughs> Which turns away many people from Sahaja Yoga after some time. So we must watch our conditionings, what sort of conditionings we have. While the Indians have conditionings of so-called religious beliefs and this ritualism, this, that. They are very much conditioned also. But it's easy to overcome that when you realize that whatever you are worshiping, for example, in India, everybody has a Kula Devata, means the family goddess, everybody has. They must worship that goddess, particular goddess, everybody has. So they have to, uh, if they just ask, Mother, are you that goddess? The vibrations start to. So the conditioning gets very easily, uh, easily eradicated. But the mental acceptance of something is very difficult to go. And I've seen also when they get married or marriage is arranged, they go mental. They go mental. If you go mental, then you cannot understand many things. But if you are spiritual, then you can understand. For example, we see Mother Earth giving us these flowers and all that. How can we go mental about it? It's a living process. For any living process we cannot get mental. So now you will say, all right, this is because the seed has got this and the seed is planted, but how, why? That you can't answer, can never answer. Then you'll keep quiet. But say, uh, if there's a sage, he'll say, all right, this is Mother Earth. She wants to give to her children these flowers, fruits, these trees, so she's working it out. So one has to jump from one conditioning of materialism. Now you should see in matter, my energy never moves, energy is stationary. It never moves. 
uh, and also energies which are moving, so-called, uh, like electricity, this, that, are absolutely blind. Supposing there is electricity here flowing, all right, well and good. But supposing somebody stops it, it will stop. It has no mind, it is a mindless thing. So in materialism you become mindless. You start seeing also that within yourself, that you have become mindless and becoming absolutely, uh, absolutely, I should say, like robot sometimes, which is mindless which is fixed, fixed quantity. And I see very much clearly in the West I've seen that people have very fixed ideas. It's difficult for them to get out of it because they don't have that movement towards the uh, spiritual subtlety where one can uh, use the mind to do something. We would say that Mother Earth has got the mind. No, that nobody can believe in the West, except for Sir Jukes. That the Mother Earth produces these vigrahas, she produces these deities. Nobody will believe. How can you believe such a thing? That this Mother Earth thinks, that this Mother Earth produces these things. But logically you can see, logically, logically. Say a tree has a certain height, the fruits have a certain shape, certain colors, flowers, same. Who changes all the seasons? Especially in India, it's very clear cut six seasons. It's called as Ruttambhara Pragya in the Hatha Yoga. Now, that is the one which is a lady which thinks. She has a mind of her own, she decides. And she, she works out everything. This concept was uh, doubly denied in the West. Is first is that they cannot accept a goddess. Woman has no part. S right from Socrates onward, nobody has talked much about a woman, except of course there is Sakina and all that, but it's very minor roles they have. Greeks had goddesses who were just like human beings, so that also gets ruled out. And very little was accepted. And when Christianity came, some of the Christians saw to it that there should be no mention of the mother in any way. But despite that, people worshipped the mother. They worshipped the mother of Christ as some like a goddess. Though in the Bible it, she's, she's talked as a woman, in a very derogatory style, she's addressed. So the conditioning of people is about the power of God who hangs somewhere in the air. That he's there and that he gives us everything. But what is the communication? What is the justification or what is the logical thing, how to explain? So you have to say it is a mystery. God is a mystery, he hangs somewhere in the air, he does everything. And how can people believe in it? So the Christian conditioning has been even worse than, I think, Jew conditioning. Because they, they just took it out, Christ's mother away. Though the painters, artists wouldn't do that. They wouldn't accept, they had the mother there. But despite all that, the motherhood has not been respected, that should have been in the Bible, which is a very wrong thing, while Mahalakshmi herself incarnated as Mother Mary, herself. And to say about Mahalakshmi as a woman, I think is a great insult. And where women are insulted like this, where the goddesses are insulted, we cannot expect any spiritual growth unless and until you accept that is the Shakti, is the Mother, who is the only thing that's the communication between us and the divinity. So this conditioning, Christian conditioning has to go out as far as the motherhood is concerned. 
It's very surprising sometimes when I see how these people are tried to bring down the level of a goddess to just a woman. So this is a very big blessing in India that they respect Mother as the Shakti and that the whole thing is done by the movement of the Shakti, by the thinking of the Shakti, by the coordination and the understanding and the planning of the Shakti only. It's not done by God Almighty, He's just a spectator. She does everything. Once that concept can fit into your heads properly, then you will see so many conditionings will drop out. Because religion was organized and in an organized religion you can put whatever you like, the way you want to put it. And it was such a big mistake by that people developed a lot of ego, a lot of uh, things against women. And also the first sin they call the original sin and all that, is because of a woman, they really ill-treated women and they have no respect for them. So the women have changed their role and instead of becoming mothers and goddesses, they have tried to become something like actresses. But you can understand that without the power, there is no sense in anything. And this is the power of love. And this is the power of truth. And once you get that power, you should humble down and know that this power is within us, which has given us all this knowledge, which has given us all this uh, ability to raise the Kundalini. All this is because of energy within us, the Shakti within us. Without that we are nothing and that too is the mother who has done it. I do not know how much to press this point but it's important because I find especially uh, in, uh, in England some newspaper people came, how do you feel as a guru, as a woman? I mean, it's a kind of a think I'm woman and uh, as if I am sort of a, uh, that movement where women are starting a fight with the men sort of a thing and now this is another guru who is a woman so she should be supported or some sort of a nonsense that. It's the only the mother who does this job. So there's no question of asking such a question. But that's what it is that we should first know that is the feminine quality of a woman as a mother is very powerful. But we should encourage it and try to develop it so that spiritually you can communicate, spiritually uh, you can imbibe these qualities for your own children. The mothers who do not have adhyat can never develop good children with proper uh, emotions, with proper value system of morality. So it is very important for every mother to be very proud that they are mothers and for girls who are going to be mothers, to be very proud that they are going to be mothers and that they represent the Shakti. So now the, what is the part of the men is to take full advantage of that power by understanding, by complimenting, by looking after that power. I am not talking only about your wives, I am talking about your sisters, your daughters, your mothers and the whole society where women are to be respected and they have to be respectable. And women should try to be respectable 
to try to know that they are the powers and they are the ones who will be used by this divine power as channels, more than men. But if they are useless, then of course they wouldn't bother about them. They would like to bother them about men much more than what you are. So it is important to understand what is your role in Sahaja Yoga. This is your role in Sahaja Yoga and I'm sure you can work it out. You can manage this part. You can uh, equip yourself for this role, which is so beautiful and so good. So much can be said about Mahalakshmi and there's no end to it, but I think uh, later on we should keep this program on every year. Uh, you all should come to Mahalakshmi temple here, to the, uh, in the Kolhapur, and then I'll again tell you all about the mother's qualities, what she is as Mahalakshmi. And today we'll have the Te uh, Hathwe, uh, Mahalakshmi of the Shri. Who is Shri Sukta? Shri Sukta. Shri Sukta is about Mahalakshmi's qualities. But the Adi Manu Yapa. Adi will have Ganesha's Tuti and then we'll have this. So, seriously, you must understand what is it. So, Pani Pai. Very boom is another day. Oh, that's a translation. I am just in meditative mood today. I don't know what I am talking. Because this Mahalakshmi is a thing that goes finishes everything else. Left, right is finished, now you are just in Mahalakshmi state. What to do? Mahalakshmi state means nirvichar, nirvikal, beyond that, I don't know what stages it is. It comes down a little bit, then again it goes back to the same. So, Dilli walon ko bhi 